Welcome back to Smoke Ribs. Today I'm going to be doing a gumbo, a seafood gumbo, a Creole style seafood gumbo that is going to knock your socks off. If you want to cook back your barbecue till you get your feel, you come to the right place, Rubs John Smoky Ribs. Smoky Ribs. All right, here is all the seafood that's going in this gumbo. I've got five pounds of Gulf Coast brown shrimp. These are about the size I like on a gumbo right here. I don't like the little small ones. They're aggravating the clean. Plus, I want to taste the shrimp. Brown shrimp is excellent in a gumbo. It's got a really strong seafood taste. That's what I prefer in a gumbo is the brown shrimp. Right here, I have one dozen blue crabs. And uh, here I have one pound. This is fresh crab meat. They pressurize this under heat to cook it so they can pick it, but it was done just in the last day or two and then put in one of these containers. That's also going in at the very end of the cook as well. All the seafood goes in towards the end. But I, right, now I had a subscriber when I did my seafood boil here a while back. He was wanting to see a crab cleaned. So I'm going to go ahead. You all know how to do shrimp. So I'm going to go ahead and take a crab and I'm going to show you how I do it. All right. First thing you do is you grab it right here by these fillers. You pop that shell off, back shell. All right, these are what they call dead men fingers. Actually what it is is a filter for the crab. These have got to come off of here. All right, now with a pair of kitchen shears, I'll take and I'll cut these flippers off here, these flappers. All right now, you got a plate here on the back. And by the way, this plate determines what the sex is of a crab. When it's this big plate, it's the female. You'll catch these a lot of times, the right time of year, where they'll be having eggs. It just This thing will be open, just slap full of eggs right here. The male has the, the pointed one. Let's see if I can find a male here. There's a male right there. See the difference? Right there. There's your difference. All right. Anyway, you want to take this plate off of here. All right now, I'm going to take and cut the flippers off this side. The only other thing I do is right here where the, the mouth and eyes is, I clipped that off. All right, so I took my crab over to the sink and I washed all the uh, innards out. All right, now what I always do on a gumbo is I break these in half or cut them in half just like that. And they'll go into the gumbo just like this. All right, I got just a stock pot here. I'm getting ready to go in with one gallon of water. We're gonna make a seafood stock. All right, I got my heat on high. We're gonna go ahead and bring this to a pretty quick boil. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take about half of these shrimp shells and heads. Remember, I had five pounds of shrimp, so I'm gonna use half of them in here. And the other half is going for another thing I'm doing, a reduction. Crab shells in here. We're gonna throw about six. We're gonna throw about a handful of these flappers. I've got the frog bone all-purpose seasoning. This is a Cajun seasoning. We're going to season this water with that. That should be plenty. i got about a tablespoon in there. All right, now I'm going to add in the maripois, which is just celery, carrot, and onion. I've got one whole onion. I've got about, I don't know, three pieces of carrot there that I chopped up just quarter it and I've also got about three pieces of celery quartered one clove of garlic now I'm gonna add in a couple of bay leaves probably about three all right I'm just gonna give all this a real good mix we're gonna let it come up to boil we're gonna let this simmer for about an hour to hour and a half all right I'm gonna go ahead and start this reduction here what I got in here so far is one tablespoon of olive oil into that, I'm just going to take some really rough chopped onion. This is one half of an onion. And I got about four cloves of garlic going in. We're just going to saute that for a few minutes. All right, you just want that to coat long enough to where you can really smell it. And I'm smelling it. So what I got going in here now is two cups of water. All right, I'm going to go in about a half a teaspoon of salt. Some cracked black pepper. I'm going to go in with about a teaspoon of this frog bone all-purpose seasoning. All right, now you want to add the remainder of these shrimp hulls and heads in. I'm going to go ahead and throw some crab flappers in there as well. 
All right, now I got one half cup of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce going in. All right, I've got three lemons that I've quartered we're going to throw in. Going to throw in about two or three bay leaves, four. Ah, oh, heck, let's make it five. All right, I'm going to turn this heat down to a simmer, about a medium. Oh, that's smelling killer. All right, the last thing I'm going in with is I'm going in with one quarter cup of a Merlot wine. All right, that's it. We're just going to stir this in. We're going to let this cook for around 30, 35, maybe 40 minutes. All right, I've been going around 30 minutes, and it, it's smelling incredible. It's looking just about right. All the lemons have gave up their juice. Got all the flavor out of these heads and all the other ingredients I've put in here. Now what I'm going to carefully do is move this on a back burner. I'm taking a smaller pot here with a strainer. I'm going to attempt to strain all the juice out of this. All right, now as you can see, it made quite a bit of juice right here. Now I'm going to reduce this down and keep reducing until we're down to like six tablespoons. It's going to be highly concentrated with nothing but pure seafood flavor plus all the other goodness that was in that pot. Going to be excellent in this gumbo to really intensify that seafood flavor way before we ever put the seafood in. All right, while I'm letting that reduce, what I've got going on here is some Koneka sausage. Koneka sausage is made right over there in Alabama, right next door. Really good in a gumbo. I always add it. All right, look how much we reduced here. Right here at the bottom. I'm just about there. I'm not going to go much more. I'm going to take this off the heat, and you can see how much it's thickened. We got around six tablespoons. That's just about what we're looking for. We got all this drained out here. That made a pretty good bit of stock there. That should be plenty for our gumbo. If by some chance it's not, you can always just use cold water in addition to that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this concentrate that I made, this reduction. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this stock. Just wanna stir that in real good, thin it back out. This stock just become a super stock. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty labor intensive recipe and we ain't near about done. I did most of it inside the stocks and such, but I wanted to use my gas stove right here to uh, do the roux and actually cook the gumbo. And uh, it's been raining all day, been storming, but uh, we got a slack period here. I'm kind of under the eve of my garage, so hopefully we're going to be okay. If not, I'm going to move everything a little bit further in. All right, I got a cast iron skillet. I just lit my burner. I'm running about a medium heat, and that's where I usually start at on a roux. I'm going to go in with one cup of vegetable oil. I do a one-to-one -one ratio on my roux. I do a one cup oil and one cup flour, all-purpose flour. All right, what I'm going to do now, start working this flour in here. All right, I've got the whole cup in. I'm just going to work this, work this in and try to get all the lumps out of it, get a good smooth looking roux. As it begins to darken, you'll see it get real silky and smooth. Looks a little weird at first, but uh, it's, it's going to be okay, I promise you. I know most of you have watched gumbo recipes and roux and such as that, and I guess you know that you've got to cook this on a medium to low heat. The more brown it gets, the lower you want to bring the heat all the way to as low as it can go right there at the end. Now one thing I want to do before I get too far into this, I want to go ahead and season it. One thing you'll notice about me is I season everything as I go and that is the best way in my opinion. Don't try to season it at the end. You can very easily over salt it. But if you'll just do some as you go. That's not a lot of salt. That's probably about a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Got some cracked black pepper going in. All right, by the way, it's very common for this to foam up like it's doing right now. I just add that salt and the pepper in there. It's going to do that, but all that's going to calm out. And uh, I'll bring you back after this roux is just about where I want it. All right, I've got the Cajun Trinity, which is celery, bell pepper, and onion. 
I'm gonna go in first with the celery. We're gonna saute this right here inside of the roux. I've got four stalks of celery going in. Now keep in mind, I cooled this roux off and I'm bringing it back up slowly with the vegetables. Now I've got bell pepper. This is about one and a half large bell pepper. I got one small onion and one medium onion that I chopped up real finely as well. All right, I just added in all these vegetables. You know what that means. We need more seasoning. I've got some more sea salt going in. All right, I'm just gonna saute these for about four or five minutes until the onions begin to get translucent. And right here at the end, I'm gonna throw about a tablespoon and a half of garlic in here. Been going about four minutes. I just added my garlic in here. We're looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this over into this big uh, Cajun Rocket Pot Gumbo Chili Pot. So now we're gonna transfer all this into this gumbo pot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be adding in this seafood stock that I made earlier. I'm just gonna ladle it in. Now this pot is cold. The roux is still warm. I just took it, put it in there. And this stock has cooled off. It's just a little warm. This is the way I normally do gumbo. And basically what I'm doing, I'm just mixing this in good. Make sure nothing's clumping up and it's not. It's just as smooth as silk. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of this stock. Now I'm gonna stop right here because I got other things going in here that's got water in them. So I don't wanna overdo it right off the bat. All right, I just lit my stove. We're just gonna let this come up, like I said, to a simmer. See where we're at. I tell you what, these rocket pots are amazing. Like I said, this is a gumbo chili pot. And I just turned this thing on two minutes ago and it's getting ready to simmer. I've got it on high. Once I get to a simmer, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower it down, but th that quick, unbelievable. Where this rocket pot is gonna be beneficial on this cook is not only the fact that I can get it up to a simmer really, really fast. See, it's already starting to simmer. Look at it. I mean, I'm two and a half minutes into it, but also I'll be able to choke my fire all the way down as low as I can go. So the biggest thing on this cook is gonna be fuel efficiency. I'm adding in two 14 and a half inch ounce cans of stewed tomatoes. All right, now I'm gonna add in about five bay leaves and about two tablespoons of fresh thyme. We've only been simmering maybe 15, 20 minutes. What I'm going to add in now, this is the frog bone low salt seasoning. And the reason I'm using low salt, and you can also use the no salt if you have that, is because I'm seasoning as I'm going with salt. Everything I've done so far, I've added seasoning to. But we definitely gotta have some of that Cajun spice in this. So you wanna go with a low salt version. Here's another secret. This is another thing that I do to really elevate the seafood flavor of a gumbo. These are dried shrimp. These are Pops Golden Gems. These are Louisiana shrimp. These have been dried. And man, oh, they have such a strong seafood smell. And they're gonna completely cook away. You're not putting these in there to eat. You're putting this in there strictly for seasoning for that seafood flavor. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more water in here at this point. This is getting a little thick. And we're just gonna let it sit here and cook. I've got more stuff going in, but it's gonna be just a bit, probably about another 30 minutes. I'm gonna be out here with some okra. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this in here. Going in now is okra. I baked this okra. That is a trick to stop it from sliming up your gumbo. If you don't want a slimy gumbo, bake your okra, or you can also deep fry it. That's what I'm talking about. All right, it's time to go in with some blue crab. I've got all these crab bodies here. They've been on ice, and they're ice cold. We're going in. I'm about to turn this heat up for just a few minutes, just to bring the heat up. We're gonna let these go about 10 minutes. Oh, by the way, just so you know, I have been going two and a half hours, and uh, I went another hour after adding that okra. Uh, first thing I got going in is all the shrimp that I peeled earlier. Right, I'm gonna give these a good mix. All right, now what I got going in is I got one bunch of green onions that I chopped up. I chopped the green part and the white part. Just use it all. 
All right now I got one pound of this back fin crab meat going in. Oh, oh man, this is smelling good. That's somewhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon of salt, that's sea salt. All right, gonna go in with some more cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna add in about another tablespoon of this frog bone all-purpose Cajun seasoning. I think we are to be pretty close. I'm getting ready to cut this fire off. The shrimp are done, the crab's done. We're gonna let this cool. All right, now this is important. What I always do is I cook a gumbo a day in advance, a day before I wanna eat it. I'm gonna let this cool down to room temperature. And at that point, it's going in the refrigerator overnight. It's gonna chill down and it's gonna give those flavors a chance to marry and get to know each other and come together and it's gonna be twice as good tomorrow, guaranteed. All right, it's the next morning. I've got this uh, pot of gumbo. It's been in the refrigerator all night long. It's completely cold. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer some of this into this smaller pot because the rest of this is gonna be frozen. Gumbo freezes really, really good. All right, you always wanna make sure you bring this up on a real low heat. It's gonna take just a little while cause it is ice cold. Got us a few crabs in there. All right, got her all put together. Let's do a taste test. Here we go. I want a shrimp in my first bite. There isn't much that I love more than gumbo, if anything. This has just got flavors that are unreal. If you wanna kick up your seafood gumbo, take the uh, tips that I put in this video here and do them. Absolutely phenomenal. I, I guarantee you this is, really really good stuff if you can't get fresh seafood i wouldn't even attempt it it's it's just not the same but what i hope you uh use some of the tricks i showed you in here like the dried shrimp and also the the base that i made and uh of course the seafood stock all of that combined just gives you an absolutely fantastic flavor for seafood gumbo all right it should be Christmas Day by the time I uploaded this video. So if it is, Merry Christmas to everybody. And I'll see you next time right here on Smoky Ribs.